this is the start of my coaching session. Here I am showing the players exactly what the session is about, explaining their roles in the session, and trying to show what I'm trying to get out from the session. At the start, it was a non-contact session in regards to that there was no um, defenders inserted or in the practice itself. With the use of the white magnet board uh, and markers, I tried to show the players as to what their movement should be and um, what they needed to do in regards to positional sense, but also tried to tell them how they should deliver um, the crosses and deliver from the start of the session. From that, obviously, you would like to think that the players themselves would be able to grasp or be able to have significant enough knowledge to be able to understand the session. And sometimes it's very hard to actually explain to people what the session is all about. The use of the magnet board, I think, helps it massively. The visual aspect of the session on a white magnet board gives them a vision of what they are expected to do within the session itself. Obviously, then you try and port that from the magnet magnetic board into the session itself, which you will see later on. One of the hard issues within the training session itself is trying to get your point across, but also trying to know when to stop, when to intervene within the training session. Me personally, I like to try and let that flow as much as possible, unless there's something significant within the session that needs to be stopped. Things likes of the weather can obviously mean. So moving on from the magnetic board, we have now started to put the session into play. To do this, what I've tried to do is to talk the players through what is required for them in the session in a very slow, slow process. I've found the best ways to do this is to actually walk them through the session itself. So they then have an idea as to what is required and what is needed to that. Now, some ways this might not be the best way. So why might it not be the best way? Depending on the level of who you're coaching, the more ability the player has got, the more trust you would give them to be able to understand the process, to understand the session, to understand what you require from that. But at this level, they are under 18s in a school academy. So to help them understand it, we've done, or I have done, the process of a very slow, methodical way of trying to them to understand what is required from them. So now we have progressed the session to add in two defenders. The actual aim of the session was defending from crosses. As I had seen this team play the previous Wednesday and they had conceded two goals from crosses. So my priority would be coaching the two centre halves as to positional sense, when to go and to attack the ball, when to not also when to go and close players down and when to shout or with or where to show them the right direction or away from goal i chose to coach the two center halves from actually behind them was that the right position that's questionable 
was my instructions to them done in a clear way so they're able to understand them again something that might need looking at the quality of the play maybe wasn't as good as what it should be so should i have stopped it and made the quality better how could i have done that well maybe by narrowing the area down maybe by condensing the area in regards to the quality of the passing maybe more sharper the quality of the crossing better in We've now added two full backs into the play. So we've now got a flat back four. So there is now pressure on the players to actually play, perform a better quality. What I've now done is maybe as I have brought in a more condensed area to try and get the better quality going. Again, I decided to coach the back four and to again try and do it during the play so to actually talk into the players as the session was going on possibly maybe not the right thing to do as maybe it would have been better to stop them asking them to stand still asking them questions as to why they did that what was their decision making in doing that so possibly maybe stopping the session more frequently might have helped players understand what they needed to do why they needed to be in a certain position so to explain the actual situation maybe more clearly help them understand it better At the end of the session, I gathered all the players together. Obviously, it was a very windy day and a cold day when doing this coaching. So obviously, to actually talk to them for long periods of time, I thought might not be the wisest thing to do. So, as they were going to have a little five-a-side game afterwards. And so I didn't want them to stand around too long um, in the cold. So I tried to keep the, the, the debriefing very brief. Try to make them understand as to what was required of them what they needed to do as individuals and as a unit in regards to um, a defensive unit um, sometimes obviously dealing with players like this um, you have to try and keep it as simple as possible um, you have to try and use terminology that they understand and not make it so complicated um, and what I found is keeping it simple, keep using plain terminology. You get your point across to them a lot easier than what you would do using more tactical instructions. So sometimes by stopping them, getting cones out, asking them questions as to what you think they should be doing in certain situations, why they did it in certain situations. Again, in a structured way that they understand or terminology that they understand helps them to develop and understand 
for a coach, I think it's very important that depending on who you're coaching, that you try and get to their level. And what I mean by that, by terminology, by keeping things as simple as possible and not using big long words sometimes that may complicate the situation for 